In 2025, scientists uncovered a space object. Its materials matched alloys manufactured on Earth in the 1970s, down to the isotope ratios. Multiple independent laboratories confirmed the analysis. This could be a lost human probe finally phoning home. But stories like this rarely stay simple. What if every clue pointing to us is the start of something stranger? The answers and the risks are about to get unsettling. Inside labs at the University of Mexico, the University of Georgia, and the Southwest Research Institute, the first step was always the same. Scan the surface, isolate the alloy, and check the numbers. Teams ran careful spectroscopy and material analysis. The Bugosphere shell showed a titanium and aluminum signature, matching alloys used in aerospace engineering. The isotope ratios, those subtle fingerprints of origin, matched Earth's own, not the cosmic blend found in meteorites or natural space debris. Each lab ran its own protocols. They used energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy and scanning electron microscopy. They searched for inconsistencies. None appeared. The results came back in remarkably tight agreement. The metallic layers, the trace elements, and the rare Earth profiles all fit the pattern of terrestrial manufacturing from the 1970s to the 1990s. Lab teams published summaries with confidence in their calibration. Four independent confirmations all pointed to the same conclusion. The titanium and aluminum blend, the isotopic match, and the absence of cosmic ray spallation, each detail suggested a human-made object. It looked crafted during the golden age of space exploration. These were not the signatures of a meteorite or an interstellar wanderer. They matched the precise ratios used in rockets, satellites, and deep space probes. Some researchers noted the sphere's surface finish. The coating resembled shielding used to protect electronics from deep space radiation. Microscopic analysis revealed a uniformity consistent with vapor deposition. That process is common in probe construction. The fit and finish, the reflectivity, and the faint residue of possible solar panel adhesives all matched vintage space hardware. For a moment, the scientific community breathed easier. The evidence seemed to settle the question. A lost probe, built by human hands, had come home. The comfort of this narrative rested on hard numbers, familiar materials, and the authority of modern lab instruments. Yet beneath the surface, Questions about missing data and chain of custody lingered, waiting for their own moment in the spotlight. During the height of the space race, mission planners sent dozens of probes and satellites into space. Many of those craft slipped out of regular tracking. Many vanished, their signals fading and their fates unrecorded. The Pioneer 6 through 9 series were launched between 1965 and 1968, each probe entered a solar orbit. Engineers expected them to transmit for only a few years, then go silent. Decades later, NASA engineers were startled to pick up brief signals from Pioneer 6. A retired engineer recalled staff joked some would come back to surprise them, but they never expected it in their lifetimes. Cold War secrecy added another layer of confusion. Many satellites carried classified payloads, and official records were incomplete by design. Tracking stations closed and paper logs went missing. Details of some launches remain redacted even now. Early trajectory predictions relied on slide rules and mainframes with limited power. Small errors compounded over decades. A calculated path could drift into mystery. Ground controllers sometimes lost contact with a probe, only to rediscover it years later in an unexpected place. Sometimes objects catalogued as unidentified were later revealed to be forgotten hardware. This legacy of missing probes and incomplete records makes the idea of a returning human artifact deeply plausible. Space history is full of lost objects that reappear sometimes decades after launch. For a while, the Buga sphere fit that pattern and offered a reassuring answer. Observatory teams across three continents tracked the Buga sphere as it drifted through the inner solar system. Each telescope captured the same sharp glints of light. The object's reflectivity was not random. It mirrored patterns seen in vintage solar arrays, 
broad regular flashes aligned with a slow, deliberate rotation. Thermal imaging revealed a distinct heat signature. A steady band of warmth suggested electronics inside were still running decades after launch. These readings matched internal heat from operating components, not a cold, inert shell of space debris. Rotation analysis echoed familiar patterns. The sphere spun at a rate consistent with gyroscopic stabilization. That technique was common in late 20th century probes. Its mass and size, about half a meter across and weighing roughly 20 pounds, fit the blueprint for an uncrewed survey craft. For astronomers used to tumbling rocket bodies and dead satellites, this measured balanced spin felt like deliberate engineering. Radio astronomers tuned receivers to the usual bands, expecting silence. Instead, they picked up faint periodic blips, steady as a clock, repeating in the 8 to 10 kilohertz range. The signal was weak, barely above the noise floor, but its regularity stood out. No known probe from the golden age of spaceflight used this exact frequency for primary communications. The presence of any structured transmission suggested intent, not accident. Some astronomers suggested a degraded echo from an old telemetry beacon operating on residual power as a last distant attempt to phone home. Taken together, these operational signatures suggested a familiar scenario. Reflected sunlight, stable heat output, controlled rotation, and persistent radio pings supported that view. Scientists who had spent years untangling orbital debris saw a lost piece of human technology. It seemed to be quietly following its programming after decades in the dark. The sense of relief was real, but the story was not finished. Inside the materials labs, anticipation gave way to unease as electron microscopes zeroed in. The Buga sphere's surface, expected to show scars from space, remained untouched. No micrometeoroid pits appeared. No impact craters appeared. No etched tracks from decades of cosmic dust. Not even the faintest sign of solar wind abrasion. The alloy's luster was as sharp as the day it left the foundry. For scientists used to battered spacecraft, the contrast was jarring. Space is not gentle. Every probe sent beyond Earth's shield returns scarred. Panels grow dull, circuits degrade under relentless radiation. But here, solar panels were tested and retested, each time returning near-perfect efficiency. Those numbers should not be possible after 50 years exposed to the sun's unfiltered rays. Lab teams compared the Buga sphere's surface to control samples from known satellites and lunar modules. Those artifacts, even when shielded, always showed steady decline and visible damage. By contrast, the Buga sphere's panels produced power matching their original design specs. No known degradation curve could explain such preservation. The titanium aluminum shell resisted every attempt at artificial aging. Accelerated radiation baths failed to change it. Ion bombardment failed to change it. Even attempts to scratch the surface with diamond-tipped instruments left no mark. The outer layer seemed immune to the forces that define space weathering. Materials scientists began to question the entire premise. If it left Earth in the 1970s or the 1980s, it should be aged. Instead, every measurement pointed to a state of preservation that defied expectation. Some began to wonder if the Buga sphere ever spent decades in deep space. Others asked if its construction used techniques beyond the reach of its supposed era. The comfort of the returning probe theory started to unravel. Reassurance shifted to a growing sense of disbelief. What once felt like closure now looked like the first hint of a deeper mystery. Thermal imaging specialist at MIT watched the Buga sphere heat profile live. The readings refused to fit any known pattern. For days, the object absorbed over 100 watts from its environment. It was a steady, silent draw, like a small appliance with no visible power source. Yet the surface stayed cold, holding just above freezing. Battery models from the late 20th century would have failed decades ago. That includes the most advanced lithium chemistries. No known solar panel from that era could sustain this output after years in space let alone after half a century. 
The numbers forced a hard look at the limits of vintage technology. By every standard, the Booga sphere should be dark and inert. Instead, it radiated a constant signature of internal activity. Physicists ran simulations and pored over energy budgets. They checked for hidden sources. Some speculated about a nuclear core, but no trace of radiation appeared. Others wondered if the sphere tapped environmental energy in ways not yet understood. The only certainty was that its power output broke every rule of Cold War engineering. Across the Atlantic, orbit analysts at the European Space Agency and at JPL faced a different puzzle. They compared the sphere approach to every known launch window from 1970 to 1990. Nothing fit. The incoming angle required gravity assists and course changes. No recorded mission could have achieved that. The velocity profile did not match any standard probe. It also did not align with decaying orbits of lost satellites. Even classified military launches, scoured from declassified logs, failed to account for the object's path. Without a launch record, there was no way to explain how a human artifact could return along such a route. The trajectory itself made no sense. Each impossibility reinforced the other. The more scientists examined the data, the less the Booga sphere resembled a lost probe. Instead, it looked more like something that simply should not be there. The gap between material evidence and orbital mechanics widened. The result deepened the mystery. Micro-CT scans at MIT and the University of Georgia revealed a structure that was seamless. Engineers could not find a single weld, seam, or tool mark. Instead of visible joints, the Bugosphere metallic shell had three concentric layers. Each layer nested perfectly within the next. Materials scientists who study microscopic machining and thermal stress found no such marks. At the molecular level, the bonds between layers looked fused atom by atom. That fusion did not match any known human process. The internal lattice of microspheres and fiber optic filaments appeared suspended, untouched by adhesives or fasteners. Such precise, uniform construction has no precedent in aerospace manufacturing. Not even the most secretive programs of the late 20th century achieved it. Communications teams turned their attention to the sphere's faint radio emissions. The periodic pulses were in the 8 to 10 kilohertz range. Their regularity drew immediate attention and raised more questions. No NASA or International Space Agency has used such low frequencies for deep space communication. The signals repeated with machine-like precision. They carried no recognizable data packets, telemetry, or encoded messages. Attempts to decode the modulation scheme failed. The pattern matched neither random noise nor any known analog or digital protocol. Radio engineers described the transmission as an empty handshake, something that mimicked the basic rhythm of a probe trying to connect, but with no content behind the greeting. Some analysts speculated the Bugosphere signal could be deliberate camouflage, by adopting a frequency and cadence that resemble terrestrial technology, the object might pass as a lost probe. It could be withholding any real information. The combination of seamless construction and deceptive signaling raised a disturbing possibility. The sphere's design might be intentionally crafted to imitate human technology down to the smallest detail. For the first time, familiar materials became unsettling. The Booga sphere appeared to be more than a relic. It was a puzzle built to be mistaken for something we once made. Conflicting interpretations now define the debate. In a conference room at the National Autonomous University of Mexico, a materials analyst summed up the impasse. The analyst said, The barrier is not capability, it is access. The alloy and isotope ratios match Earth. The assembly method and longevity do not. That paradox has split the research community into two uneasy camps. Some scientists argue the Bugosphere is a product of a classified Cold War program. They point to lost satellites and probes, and to patchy records. They point to technical leaps in black projects. If the object is a relic of secret engineering, the seamless construction might be explained by undocumented technology. This view rests on precedent. What looks impossible may simply be undocumented. For these researchers, 
the comfort is that every puzzle can have a human explanation. That explanation may be buried under bureaucracy and red tape. Others see mimicry at work. Independent astronomers reviewed minor planet center logs. They catalogued several unexplained objects in orbits similar to the Booga sphere. Patterns of movement, composition, and faint radio emissions repeat across cases. The similarities suggest a coordinated effort to appear as human technology while quietly observing. That idea is no longer fringe. The nearby discovery of the Yumbo sphere showed the same anomalies. That deepens the suspicion the Booga sphere is not alone. The core question remains. Are these artifacts products of human secrecy? Or are they imitations so precise they blur the line between ours and not ours? For now, the mystery has grown beyond a single object. The debate has shifted from one sphere to the possibility of a hidden pattern. One that may never have been meant for us to solve. Inside NASA headquarters, the debate over what to do next has stalled. Behind closed doors, agency directors and military officials weigh every possibility. Options include capture, hands-off observation, and outright denial. The stakes are not just scientific. Some officials worry about biological contamination. They cite protocols written for the return of unknown materials. Others fear an international incident if the sphere's origin is revealed. Leaked meeting notes show a split. Some urge immediate recovery. Others warn interference could provoke consequences no one can predict. At MIT, a reviewer's memo circulates quietly among physicists. The memo says, The energy anomaly is real. This isn't hyperbole. It is the measured assessment of serious scientists confronted with data they cannot explain through conventional means. The note echoes through agency emails and it fuels growing unease. If the Booga sphere is simply a lost probe, why does it defy every model of degradation and power loss? If it is not, what else could it be, and who or what might be watching? With every new analysis, the list of unanswered questions grows. Why would an object use Earth materials but exhibit construction beyond our reach? Why mimic vintage technology while hiding capabilities we cannot duplicate? Is the sphere a message, a test, or a warning? For now, the object remains untouched. It hangs between the urge to know and the fear of what knowledge might bring. No agency has committed to a recovery mission. The question hangs in the air. Do we dare solve this mystery at all costs? Or has the real test already begun? Today, the Buga sphere sits at the edge of what we call knowable. It is built from Earth's past, yet outpaces Earth's science. As we push deeper into space, the line between human creation and cosmic mystery blurs. The real question now is not what it is, but what it means that we cannot tell. What would you do if the familiar no longer looked back?